Hi, this is Patrick Kilby with Rio Products. Welcome to Rio's Tying the Fly. Today we're tying a partridge soft tackle. You're going to need to start off with a size 14 hook. You can use a nymph or a dry fly. The nymph will give you a little bit more sizing to this wire, which will be a little heavier, helping the fly sink a little bit better. Uh, but both hooks will work for this. We're going to start our thread just up here behind the eye take a few turns overlapping the thread and then tying down with one twist around it. Trim off our excess. We're going to move this back until we're even with our hook point. From here, we're going to start by adding in our small copper wire. Make sure that doesn't roll over the top. We'll tie that in, moving back to a point even with the barb of the hook. We will let this wire sit back out of our way. If it's unruly, you can trap it down with a magnet or something. Next, we're going to tie in some strands of this awesome looking pheasant tail feather. To do that, we're going to just open this up and select a small little section of, of this feather and then we'll just slide it down and trim this off at the base. We can now tie this in. We're going to take those pheasant tail fibers and lock those into place. Again, we're back at the end of the barb, even with the barb. Now we're going to work our thread forward. And we're going to think of this hook in thirds. So this upper third is going to be our thorax, which is going to be the peacock. And this back two thirds is going to be our abdomen, which is going to be made up of this pheasant tail material. So these are short fibers. So we are going to do a technique where as you wrap this around, sometimes you're going to have to hold it with your finger on the shank while you reach under and grab the rest with your other fingers. So let's give it a go. So you can see I'm pinching that against the shank that allows it to stay tight and not unravel. So I can just push it around and this is a helpful move with a short material like this. These fibers can also be a bit on the delicate side. So too much pressure on them, too much pulling on them can break them. So now we have them where we want them. They've covered that back two thirds and we can tie this off. And we can trim off the excess. We've got our pheasant secured on there. And if you notice just the natural modeling that that gives us, it's a very um, buggy quality. It, it looks very natural that it's not so uniform and, uh, but it's got different tonation to the colors there. Another natural material that is very buggy and offers natural iridescence dark and light highlights is this peacock curl. I have two strands here. I'm going to tie this in and build up a little bump right here that's a little thicker than the back part here. So I'm going to secure this in a few wraps. I am going to trim off that excess. I'm just going to move my thread forward a few turns and then I'm going to do similar with what I did with the pheasant is push it around and hold it in place so I can reach under and grab it. And I'm going to just gently build this up so it's a nice little bump. And if it separates on you, just you can back up and Keep it going. You could also 
tie in one at a time if you wanted to. But all we're looking for is this two-tone effect. So when you tie these off, you just want to bring the thread back behind the material and lock it down and then take another turn behind it and then at least a turn or two in front of it. That really helps secure it in place. Trim off that excess. Now, this is where we get to bring our wire in. As I mentioned, both of these materials are a bit on the delicate side. They're natural fibers and uh, we want to protect them. So with this copper wire, we're going to spiral this up the entire body. That's going to help fortify this. And, but it's also going to give a really nice segmentation. All these insects, mayflies, caddisflies, they all have a segmented body. And this copper wire really helps highlight that. So we are going to just spiral this up. Trying to take fairly even spaced out wraps as you go. Again, we're going to tie this off by making sure our thread comes up behind the material. That captures it. Then at least a turn or two in front to help lock it in. Another turn or so behind and it's secure. This is where our dedicated wire scissors come in. So just an old retired pair of scissors. I mark mine with red to know that I don't use them for anything else. And you can just come in here and trim off that excess wire. All right, if we stopped here, this is an awesome little fly. You could use it in lakes as a midge. You can use it in rivers um, for mayfly or caddis. It, it's just, it's a sweet little fly that'll catch you fish. We're gonna take it a step further and put this soft tackle on it, which is gonna make this nice soft shroud that looks like the fly is emerging. So it gives it some life. It could be wings, it could be legs, uh, but it's got life. It's gonna move and pulsate in the water as it swings across in the current. So to do that, we are going to use a partridge feather. You can just see all the unique modeling that's on it. The, the dark and light tones. This is going to create a shroud of movement around this fly that looks like this insect is coming to life and moving through the water. We want to start by pulling down much of the fibers so it looks something like this. And this gives us a tie-in point somewhere up in here. And then we are going to remove fibers from one side of this feather. And to do that, the easiest way is to pull that off. So you end up with just fibers on one side of the stem. Now, we can tie this in. All right, we've got our feather in place. We're ready to take a turn around this shank. Given how dense these fibers are in here, I'm guessing it's gonna take one turn to come around this and give us the look we want. Less is more on these flies. Two turns and that could be so dense that it doesn't move in the water the way we want it to and one turn is usually all it takes. So uh, we just want to be very sparse with it. So I'm going to take some hackle pliers. I'm going to pinch the end of this and gently coax this around. The shank. And there's our turn. 
So I'm going to hold this up out of the way and shimmy my thread in there so I don't capture extra fibers. Get a couple of turns on that to lock it down. Then I'm going to trim off that excess feather. And I'll use good scissors instead of my wire scissors. There we go. Now, take a couple more turns to just really make sure that that is locked in. You can see how wonderfully sparse that is. That's exactly the look you want on these. Now, we want to keep this head very small, so we're just going to whip finish right here. Five turns, one, two, three. And we are there. I love to fish soft tackles under larger dries. I love to fish them behind uh, foam patterns. I love to fish them uh, behind like a higher up on a nymphing rig. So if you have a heavy nymph down below and you put the soft, tacker, soft tackle on a dropper up above, it looks more like an emerger because it's higher in the water column. I like to fish these on a trout spay. So you can swing it across usually at least two, a heavier one with a bead and a lighter one. Again, you're covering two different water columns with it. And all this movement just looks like life. And with the pheasant and the peacock, it's just a deadly combination. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you have learned something today. I really appreciate you letting me share this pattern with you. Thank you.